Hello, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. And you can also find me at um, the Conscious Resistance Network or the Conscious Resistance uh, YouTube channel. So I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we have Justin Nunez, a anarchist graphic web designer from Florida, who is hey, uh, spreading anarchy... Um, on the internet, which is basically the battleground of the modern anarchist. <laughs> so, sure. ju so Justin, uh, so tell tell us how you became an anarchist. What led you to to this philosophy? <laughs> I don't I don't think it's uh, one thing. I think it was uh, many things, many factors uh, of becoming an anarchist. Um, I think I've told you before. Um, I started out as a Republican in uh, high school, uh, mainly because I didn't believe in paying uh, uh, taxes or higher taxes, and uh, <laughs> that that pretty much uh, made me a Republican. Uh, then eventually, um, when I reached college, uh, you know, my views changed a little bit. Um, you know, I wanted to uh, put more money towards schools and and bridges and all kinds of investments in, in our country and, um, you know, after that, after experiencing life, after, you know, seeing how hard it is to, to live in the real world and, and be on your own, I've, I've just realized uh, you just you just can't count on the government, period. Um, so, um, so, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. Um, so, was there any, like, books or, like, personalities or podcasters that influence you? I would have to say um, it was uh, Adam Kokesh and Stefan Molyneux. Um, I kind of just found them on YouTube. I was just looking around, and at first I, I, I thought they were just complete nut jobs, uh, you know. And uh, <laughs> I, I I would listen to like a few minutes of their of their uh, ideas, and yeah, I just I would just label them as extremists for some reason, and uh, you know. Um, I was I was out of work for a while, and uh, I decided to give them a, a, a second uh, try and and really try to understand where where they're we're coming from, right? So, yeah. Um, it was it was then um, after watching most of their videos and, and really trying to understand where um, where they're coming from is when I realized um, they're not they're not crazy. They're just yeah, they're they're actually pretty logical, and uh, <laughs> everyone else everyone else is the insane one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I don't I, I really don't know how to explain it, but uh, a lot of the things that uh, Adam Kokesh uh, brought up, especially when it comes to cops, when it comes to government, uh, uh, made a lot of sense, and um, I would just have to look back when I was growing up and and realized that um, I didn't really have government there to make sure I was okay, that I had food on the table, that I had a gas in uh, in my car and uh, had lunch money, you know, it was everything that I had was uh, provided by my family, by my father who, um, who started his own business and uh, was working really hard, you know, he had two or three people under him and um, and that's how we got by. Um, you know, they, they later, uh, divorced, uh, I think when I was around six or seven years old and, um, you know, it was just, uh, my sister and I and, and my mom and, and, uh, you know, she, she had to work and she cleaned offices and, but she provided for us and we never really had to go to the government for, for anything. Mm -hmm. So, so, so how is uh, how, how is how are they with uh, like regarding these views? Like uh, when you talk talk to, talk about this with them. Well, um, my my dad, my dad understands. You know, uh, right off the bat, he he agrees with um, a lot of things that uh, that I, I talk to him about, especially when it comes to taxes. Uh, you know, that's that's the one thing that that. My dad worries about every year is uh, is um, filing for taxes and if if he can afford taxes that year, yeah, and and things like that. And um, 
and when I when I spoke to my mom about it, she was uh, I don't know. She 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 agreed with most of what I've been trying to uh, try to communicate to her when it comes to to anarchy, when it comes to uh, a voluntary uh, society, yeah. but. But then she, she, you know, she, she resorts to, uh, well, you know, that's not the world that we live in, you know, and, you know, in in the real world, we need we need government for this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, uh, we 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 butt heads a lot, uh, especially uh, during dinner um, mm-hmm. when when I talk about the war, when I talk about uh, education, and how how lousy it is, and there's there's so many people in 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 my situation where they have higher degrees than I do. Uh, some of them will have a, a master's degree or a PhD, and and they're working at a at a restaurant, and they're busting their ass to to pay off this huge debt that they incurred while going to school. Yeah. And and they honestly don't know they don't know why they don't even feel empowered after. Uh, after the education that they had, after all the years of, of writing assignments and mm-hmm. and studying late at night, you know they they don't see the investment. Yeah. And and why should they? I mean, they're they're in forty thousand dollars in debt and and they're working at a restaurant, you know, where your your degree doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. Too many people think a piece of paper is. Uh is uh, justification for being in you know fifty thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars in debt? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 amazing. It's crazy. I, d- I don't I don't get it. Yeah. And uh, it was only it was only after uh, I left school that uh, I realized the economy was really bad, and I'm I'm applying for all these different types of jobs, and and I wasn't getting any callbacks. No one no one really cared about my degree. You know, they all asked me about. Uh, how many years of experience I had, and you know, luckily I was I was working in the field while I was uh, pursuing my my degree. Yeah. So I had I had some um, a little bit of a and manage over my classmates, but uh, you know, even now uh, my my classmates still call me every now and then and they ask me, uh, "Do you have a job? Um, are you working?" You know, I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, thank God I'm working. I'm still working." Yeah. And uh, you know, and they're not. Right now, they're still they're still looking for work, and mm-hmm. a lot of times uh, they don't have a certain skill set that they should have uh, should have been trained in in school. But for whatever reason, it wasn't in the curriculum, so now they they can't get into the field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what happened to my classmates. Yeah, and then also the internet, to me, it seems like it's rendering a lot of um, college degrees to be obsolete, right? Yeah. Because how much information can you acquire for free <laughs> online, <laughs> right? <laughs> through your own independent yeah. investigation, through YouTube, through Wikipedia, through, you know, Google. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. You could, you could do a lot of things on... Uh, through the internet. Uh, before that, uh, before the internet, you would actually have to call an expert, uh, you know, if, if you need to uh, open your car or if you need to uh, do some uh, home improvements or uh, change a tire, you know, yeah. Yeah. You, you needed to, to find someone that could do that for you. And uh, it's it's so empowering now. It's 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 kind of like having a library in your on your phone or on your computer. You know, yeah. it's it's crazy. You just you just um, Google it and it's right there in yeah. seconds, you know, it's. It's Usually, like, yeah, you don't even have to go to the second or third page. It's right there on the first page. Yeah, 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 yeah. It really is uh, awesome. And, uh, and I think it's just the beginning. You know, it's like we're just scratching the surface. Like, uh, <laughs> I think the potential of what can, you know, what, what we can achieve with the Internet is, is just um, monumental. Yeah, yeah, so, that's incredible. Um, you know. it's, it's amazing how... I was in uh, middle school, and uh, you know that's when the internet was uh, taking off, and it was just this clunky thing that uh, you know not a lot of people used. And you know now I'm uh, I'm out of school. I'm I'm 26 years old, and you know I'm working for a company as as a web designer, as an email designer. You know, and this is what I do for a living now. So it's 
it's, it's amazing how how things change. So how many of or those skills? How, how things direct you. How many of those skills did you learn in public school? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I, w I would say the the majority of the of the things that uh, I learned, I learned uh, on my own. I learned uh, going on YouTube. I learned. Uh, going to uh, to Barnes and Nobles. There's just so many uh, uh, good resources out there. Um, and honestly, uh, there'd be times where I'd be in class and I'm we're going through the material and I'm like, well, um, I, I did this years ago. I, I, I've already, you know, I've already done this. Yeah. I'm already doing this at work. Um, <laughs> I'm being trained in this now. It's yeah, too, yeah. It's it's. <laughs> exactly, and 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 sometimes it's it's their uh, skill sets that you don't even need. Yeah. Oh yeah, but definitely big time. Yeah, it's like anytime anytime the government takes over any industry, you know, uh, whether it's government schools or uh, or um, healthcare or you know transportation, yeah. um, it's like it freezes in time. You know. Yeah, it does. It does, and, and um, <laughs> it's it's crazy. I mean, I, I've I've. I, I told you about this uh, before. Uh, my my mom works at a pediatric clinic, and um, they're struggling to keep the doors open because there's just so much red tape. There's so much so much rules and and regulations in in in, in that uh, industry that it's it's actually putting her competitors uh, out of business. And sometimes they they, they call my my uh, my mom's uh, pediatric clinic and asking if uh, they need extra help or if uh, if they'll hire them to work there or if they want to do some kind of uh, merge yeah. with them. Oh, really? You know? Uh -huh. No, it, it, it's shocking. It's shocking that mm -hmm. you can compete with someone and then months later they want to merge with you because they can't survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And, e and even my mother's uh, pediatric clinic was uh, just struggling, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's tough. It's tough when you have uh, so much paperwork to fill out that's uh, mainly uh, mandated by government, then it's getting in the way of uh, actually providing the service yeah. to patients. You know, and pediatrics is is not an easy job. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of therapists that you have to pay, and there's a lot of patients that you have to, to bring in, and you can't you can't service them unless you have all this uh, paperwork done, mm -hmm. and then you have to uh, you know deal with Medicare and Medicaid. Yeah, and sometimes uh, they don't pay them on time. Sometimes the 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 business is waiting to to uh, collect ten, twenty thousand dollars that they should have been paid months ago, months ago. Wow. Okay, and there's been times where the where the boss just has to take out a loan. Oh, wow. To keep, really? Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not kidding you. I'm not wow. kidding you. That's so. Wow. These are the things that my my mother tells me. Yeah. You know, and wow. that's tough. So, so how is how is Obamacare affecting them? Uh, <laughs> oh, shoot. I mean, I, I I don't even know where to begin. Yeah, um, there, it it's just they they can't deal with it. Um, my mom actually has to go out and do some kind of training because they need to teach them uh, uh, extra steps in in uh, processing paperwork, and if they don't do it right, then they'll get penalized or go to jail or or lose their license, or or they can't uh, practice pediatrics, or yeah, what have you, and it's they have such a hold on on the industry. It's it's becoming uh, unprofitable to, to to have a pediatric clinic. Oh really? So yeah. so yeah, again, a lot of pediatric clinics are just uh, giving up. They're closing their doors, and and they just can't deal with it because it's just it's too much. Um, it's already hard enough as it is to, to run a business. Now you have to uh, follow these rules that uh, uh, the government uh, wants you to follow, and if you don't, then you know they'll put you in jail or give you a fine or what have you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my uh, my mother, I, I grew up as a as a, in a democratic family, right, fiercely democratic, and uh, and now my mother calls herself a socialist, <laughs> so she's even worse, <laughs> but. She's constantly, actually, she's one of the people that are actually praising Obamacare. You oh, know, really? You know, we need a single payer health care. We need, this is how we're all going to get health care. This is wonderful. Of you course, know, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. It's, it's, it's sad because 
I was I was in her shoes uh, uh, not too long ago, and I I just believe that if if we had the right people in government, then things would work out. But you know, you you get to a point where you look back and. In every country, they're 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 having the same problems. They're saying the same thing. They're, oh, if we just have the right people do this, this, and that, then you know the country will be fine. And I guess they've been doing that throughout history. And yeah. It just it's not happening. I don't I don't remember one time in my life where I, where I thought to myself, thank God for government. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have this, this, and and that. So yeah, yeah. It's like um, it's like a, I think some people who support government they say. That it, it's like uh, you know an orchestra and a conductor, right? So the the president or people in government would be like the conductor, managing mm -hmm. the entire orchestra, right? And so that's how a lot of people think. You know, it's just somebody who's managing everyone else. We need somebody in power to manage everyone else, right? But yeah. but but the difference is that the members of the orchestra were not forced to be there, right? <laughs> Yeah. And, and they're free to leave if they want, right? Right. Whereas the same, it does not apply to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, it, so, um, you know, I, I, I had a lot of time to think about it. And, um, you know, I realized you just, you can't, you can't, you can't trust politicians. Because in every election, you know, they, 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 They'll tell you exactly what you want to hear. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put more money towards education. I'm gonna put more money towards healthcare. I'm gonna fix our immigration problem, and they do it every every election. You know, and they come out with these ads and they fight against each other, and and it's ridiculous. It's getting to a point where if I see a political ad, I'll just I'll just turn the TV off. I'm just I'm done with it. I know I I, I see it for what it is. It's just a, a little chess game. Yeah. You know, and they're 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 just manipulating people and. You know, unfortunately, people just, people just, uh, you know, they listen to it because they they need some kind of, uh, some kind of hope, some sense of hope, you know, mm -hmm. that something's going to change and, and they need to hear it. But unfortunately, <laughs> that's not the case. And, you know, sometimes you just got to be real with yourself and just, and just realize there's no one out there that's going to help you, you know, you just, you're just going to have to figure it out on your own you're just gonna have to work really hard you're just gonna have to be opportunistic and and you know just improvise improvise uh uh your opportunities yeah i think people they get stuck in this mindset where they're like if, if i just stay in my dead-end job and i work there and i go to and I, and I get on time and i'm there on time and i do my work and i go home you know um mm -hmm. i'll be fine Right, and I don't have to try, you know, more in my. I don't have to like, um, you know, pursue anything more profound than that. <laughs> and, and yeah, and it's sad. It's sad because I, I I I look at my mom and she works so hard. She works she works like a horse, you know. Yeah. And and you know, it, it's sad for someone who who is really tired of of going to work at, uh, in the morning and 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 then leaving at six o'clock and. And getting home exhausted, you know, and there's only, she only has enough time to eat, take a shower, and, and, and go to bed, you know, and do the same thing all, all over again. And she doesn't see a way out, you know. And and neither did I when I was working, but, you know, it got to a point where, you know, you think to yourself, well, maybe maybe the, the best way out of poverty is just to, you know, start a business, you know. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of times where... I'll be speaking with an entrepreneur or or a friend of mine who's also uh, uh, running a business or his friend starting a business, and it's 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 great to be around those type of people because they really they really get it. They're they're the, they're the ones that are working at these uh, nine to five jobs and decided you know what this is not worth it. You know I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life uh working for someone else's dream or for someone else's business. I'm just gonna save up money and start my own business, hire people to work for me and uh you know offer a service or, or some kind of product and um you know that's that's that works for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah that reminds me of the the recent uh Hillary Clinton uh comment that she said about she's like she said um don't let anyone tell you 
that businesses or corporations create jobs. <laughs> I know. I could. I could not believe that. <laughs> that was amazing. And then, yeah, I, I, I mean, like how, how could, how could a politician say that? <laughs> well, never mind. Never mind. I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, right? Yeah, but, right. But, but then I heard that um, so many people called her out on it that she finally had to, uh, like, um, uh, how, how do you say, like, redact it, and she said. Um, She's like, no, no, no. I didn't mean that. What I meant to say was, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't let don't. anyone tell you that tax breaks create jobs. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> That's is that really any better? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what? Um, we just ha we just have to wake people up. They need to. You need to. You know, make them realize that they're living in the matrix, and we 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 said that a lot, uh, and um, it's true. We live in a matrix. We live in a in a society where, you know, they tell you, you know, go to school and and go to college, and then find a good paying job, and then, uh, you know, save up for retirement, and and that's that's your life, you know. And a lot of people. Uh, were raised that way. I was raised that way. I went to school. I worked hard. I busted my ass, and and as soon as I got out of school, um, you know, I struggled. I couldn't find work, and I had to to improvise. I had to find opportunities where I didn't think there were opportunities, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I didn't have uh, you know, uh, a safety net. I just had to figure it out. Yeah. So I just. I just got my shit together and decided, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start some kind of a uh, web design business, and mm -hmm. you know, so I started freelancing. And, you know, that you know, I've I've been freelancing for ten months, and that's actually helped me out a lot. Yeah, I remember so, I, I remember reading a uh, a statistic where, that said, um, like in the early 1900s, um, the the ratio of um, employees to entrepreneurs was like um, like five percent. Five percent were employees, ninety-five percent were entrepreneurs, right? Business owners, mm -hmm. and today, that's completely reversed, <laughs> right? Five percent yeah. are entrepreneurs, ninety-five percent are employees. You know what? And that's that's so sad. That that's extremely sad because I, I I we we now have a population that has a mentality that if they just go to school and work under someone, they'll be fine. And this is not the right economy for that. We we don't have an economy to to to. Uh, you know, sustain that 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 idea. Yeah. You know, and we need to get we need to go back to uh, uh, starting businesses and 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 actually provide something. You know, contribute to, to society. We need to be a, a population, a, a society of, of hustlers. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I mean, it sounds funny. It sounds hilarious. It sounds like something that. Uh, you know, you, you picture in your head uh, like some kind of pimp or someone dealing with drugs, but at the end, it's it's people that are that are hustling, they're getting by, they're actually doing better than you. Yeah, and, you know, and, and they're creating a product that people voluntarily want to buy, right? <laughs> right, right, and that's 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 what we need to do now. We can't we can't rely on jobs anymore. They they, they don't pay enough, and yeah. and they're being they're being choked to death. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. with, with with taxes and regulations, and um, it's just it's too much. And and then they 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 go crazy because Burger King wants to move out of the country and start business uh, elsewhere. I mean, it's they're not crazy. It's it's the 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 taxation in this country is is, is going too far. Yeah. You know. So so uh, so w w when you talk to people about um, you know anarcho capitalism. What is like? What are some of the arguments that people give you? Uh, the first thing they say is, uh, "Who's gonna, who's gonna build the roads?" And, <laughs> yes. uh, first thing. You know, what about cops? What about courts? Yeah. And um, you know, just that's, that's mainly what I hear. But um, I mean, I've told you before. We I, I read an article about the a guy who was already working on roads. Uh, there's already a, a private. Uh, company that will sell security uh, yeah. for communities you know yeah. um, what, do, what do police do right now they don't they don't protect communities I don't, I don't, I don't remember the last time a, a police officer drove by my community just to make sure everything was safe <laughs> you think you, you think when I'm broken down in a 
on a street, they may come and assist me or, or help me with my car or anything. No, no, they drive right past me. Uh, unless I, I, you know, run a red light or I don't have my seatbelt on, then, then they want to assist me by giving me a $200 ticket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I always tell people, you know, you really, you really, you really think cops are there to keep you safe. You know, when you're driving and you see the, 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 the lights flashing in your rear view mirror, do you feel safe? <laughs> no, like, on, on Honestly, honestly, every, every person I, I, I've, I've spoken to, a lot of my friends, I, I tell them, listen, how do you feel when the, when the, the police officers uh, put their lights on behind you? You know, <laughs> most of them don't say, oh, man, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I feel so safe right now. I know, right? <laughs> no one's going to come and, and uh, pull me over and take my money. No. <laughs> but um, it's scary. I, I'm, I, 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 I get nervous every time I, I, I see uh, the police uh light up their, their, their vehicles, you know. Um, I've had multiple experiences with police officers, and uh, they've never been uh, good experiences. They were always, they were always uh, very violent towards me. They were rude to me. Oh, yeah? Uh, really? Yeah. I've, I've never had a good experience with a police officer, even, even when, you're, when you're polite with them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they always have some kind of um, attitude. They always have some kind of... Uh, I don't know, um, some kind of superiority complex. Have you have you filmed one of any of your encounters with them? Um, there was uh, once, and uh, I kind of messed up on my my phone. I was trying to take it with my phone, but uh, I got too nervous and, and I didn't film the whole the whole encounter. And basically, what happened was uh, a friend of mine actually uh, called me to help her move her sister's uh, belongings from her house. Yeah. And uh, long story short, her sister's uh, her sister was uh, going through a divorce with her ex husband, and uh, they were moving their stuff out. And it was um, it was a very toxic uh, environment. I felt it as soon as I got there. Uh, they were both fighting. It was very uncomfortable. Uh, and uh, the cops were called there multiple times because uh, you know the sister the sister just didn't feel safe. You know, yeah. and we're trying to convince these cops. Listen, can you just stay here until the process is over? Because uh, we don't feel safe here. I didn't feel safe. Uh, uh, the husband was there with um, with his uh, uh, group of people helping him out, and I I felt they were really aggressive. I felt that they were uh, ready to um, do something if if there wasn't a police officer there. You know, mm -hmm. it it was just a very uh, hostile environment. So I'm there trying to uh, convince the cop, could you just, you know, just stay until the proceedings are over? Yeah. And basically they told us, well, we don't have time for this. You know, we need to be, we need to be out. We need to, to be uh, servicing the community. I was like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? We, 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 we're, we called you because we need your services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like what, what they really mean is that they need to, to hide behind a bush and, and catch people speeding. <laughs> it's very right? it's very noble of them, right? Yeah. So, long story short, um, a female officer later uh, arrived at, at the at the residence, and I was in and out of the, the house, uh, taking uh, some of her belongings out. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm in and out, in and out, and they're still trying to calm uh, the husband and and uh, the wife down and. Um, you know, the wife is outside. Uh, she's uh, about to enter the, the residence, and I asked her, uh, "Are we done? Are we done uh, moving your your belongings, or do we need to come back tomorrow?" And the female officer was inside, and, and she was right next to me when I, when I when I asked her. And I wasn't even asking the the officer; I was asking the the, the wife. Yeah. You know, and and the, her first reaction was, uh, "For the fifth time, she's done." Yeah. And. You know, she she said it right in my face. We we never had any verbal communication. She just yelled at me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, because yeah, she yeah. she just didn't want to be there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I I didn't I didn't deserve that that kind of treatment. I didn't deserve uh, deserve to be scolded that way. So, I I backed up and I told her, "Could you calm down?" I mean, <laughs> I I didn't understand where where the, the aggression was coming from. Yeah. And right away, she she wanted to she asked me for ID. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you believe that? Because I asked her to. I asked her to calm down. She's immediately. 
I need to see your ID. Oh, shoot. And what, and what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the first thing I thought of was, um, what would a cop lock do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So I said, uh, did I commit a crime? Yeah. And she exactly. wouldn't answer. She's, I need to see ID. Did I commit a crime? You know? <laughs> I don't need to show you ID if I haven't committed a crime. Uh-huh. I haven't done anything to to this officer. Yeah, you know, I wasn't even I wasn't even speaking to her, <laughs> and, and uh, she's coming at me that way. So um, the the male officer who was right next to, to her uh, started screaming at me. You asked too many questions here, boy. You better you better leave this residence before I I I, I take out the cuffs and, and arrest you or blah, blah, blah. I, I don't remember. I was just so scared that, wow. uh, yeah, the, the first thing I did was uh, put my hands up to show I wasn't the, a threat. Oh, my God. Uh, and and even the family inside were shocked by the, the way the, the cops reacted, you know? So um, I, I walked out of the residence. Uh, I was waiting in the, in the parking lot. And uh, I see that the female officer pulled my, my friend aside and started investigating her. Or interrogating her, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, ten minutes later, she comes out screaming my full name, screaming my address. Oh my god! Uh, wow. Yeah, she's 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 wow. Yeah, she's yelling my personal information out in public, right? She's not she's not inside the house. She's she's outside screaming my wow. my personal information. Wow. You know, and I'm just I'm just shocked. How how how. How dare you, you know? Yeah, yeah. She, she even said my social security number out loud. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. I, I couldn't believe this was coming from a police officer. This is someone just using scare tactics, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it, I just, I don't know. <laughs> so like, the, the family were, were just surprised, and uh, we ended up uh, leaving the, the residence just because uh, the police officer didn't want to deal with us. So mm-hmm. we left because we were scared that they were going to arrest us. So. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the people that, that call the police officers uh, end up having to, to leave the the, the residence. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, people have to realize how unaccountable they are. Like, any action that they do, yeah. you know, they, they have no... Um, I, I, I was scared. I was scared that they were going to arrest me and, and, and charge me for misconduct. You know, whatever, whatever that means. Uh, Resist, it, it basi- re- resisting arrest, that's a, that's a funny as accusation. <laughs> yeah, it literally, it literally means you didn't do anything wrong. We're going to arrest you anyways. Yeah. And, you know, we're just going to charge you because we can. And we don't have a supervisor here to watch the proceedings. So we're just going to act the way uh, we like. Have, have you seen the... Like, uh, who, who, do you, who do you call if, if the cops are... are, are Abusing your rights, you right. can't call. Any, there's nobody else to call. Exactly. Who do you call? <laughs> Except exactly. an attorney. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure that's going to be cheap too, right? An attorney. <laughs> All right. Um. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's basically a monopoly on violence. You know, that's what I, that's what people have to realize. And and the only the only thing that gives the law gu- uh, teeth is. The guns of the police, right? The yeah. Um, the I, I, I honestly have to say, I've, I've, I'm, <laughs> I'm more uh, worried about a, a police officer than than any common criminal, because at least uh, uh, a criminal is not gonna pretend like he has a, a right to uh, assault you or, or take your things. He knows he's doing it. You know, he, he knows he has. He's he's just gonna do whatever he feels like it. Yeah. But uh, at least with with uh, with a criminal, he he's not trying to justify it. You know, he's not trying to trying to convince me that he's doing some kind of service. Yeah, it's amazing that people go into that field um, actually thinking that they're going to help people and yeah. you know protect the innocent and you know you know you know imp- you know arrest uh, evil doors and you know <laughs> crap yeah, no, like no, that. They're, they're, it's the opposite. I I think they're more violent than than the criminals because they get away with it. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, there's a, a rap a rap song. I don't know if you heard of it. Um, this is what happens when you call the cops. Have you seen that one? Yeah, R- yeah, Rob, I've seen it. Rob and and it, it's it's sad because it's all real footage. Of yeah, cops just uh, doing what they do best. And and uh, what really upsets me is when people say, "Oh, it's just a few bad apples." It's not a few bad apples. This is this is the culture of, of police officers. They just do whatever they feel like. And if and if they're angry and if 
you've hurt their ego, they'll they'll physically do something about it, you know? Yeah. Because there's no one watching your back. Yeah, exactly. That's the world. <laughs> well, that's the world as it is today, right? That's where uh that's what voluntarists and anarchists strive to do is teach people that there's a different way that's possible, that we don't have to um we don't have to interact with people through the guns of government, through institutionalized violence, right? Yeah, and and it's 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 sad that people just they see a uniform, they see a badge, and they disregard the the violence. Yeah, yeah, or, or they think you know that person probably did something to deserve it. Whatever, yeah, whatever but, they're doing, <laughs> you know. But if the guy's covered in tattoos and uh, he's wearing baggy clothes and he's doing the same thing, then somehow that's and worse. Especially or, if he's black or his, Hispanic, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really it's really amazing. Some, oh. Somehow that uniform just justifies everything. Oh yeah, definitely. Complete uh, blindness to moral, you know, natural law, <laughs> morality. Yeah. So um, all right, so so let's uh, finish up. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, so tell everyone where they could find your work if they want to seek out your services. Um. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you could uh, visit my website, uh, graphicdesigner.com. It's not with a C, it's uh, with an X. Graphics, with okay. an X. Okay. Graphicdesigner.com. And uh, you can see my portfolio there. I have, uh, I have a bunch of uh, websites from uh, medical websites to uh, a race car websites to uh, pet shops. And um, if uh, anyone from uh, the anarchist community needs a, a website or some logo or graphics, just uh, feel free to call me and um, I'll even take your bitcoins. <laughs> Excellent. So. And then just to let everyone know that uh, Justin is working on my website, so I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing my best. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, so, so if you want to finish up with any uh, any message for uh, the audience? <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just don't trust government. Just do everything yourself. If if you need uh, if you need a uh, better healthcare, if you need a uh, uh, you know a, a better car, a, a better house, just you know work for it. Just just start your own business. Think outside the box. Don't don't do what other people tell you to do. You know? um, don't don't go in with this uh, false mentality that the school's gonna solve all your problems. It didn't for me. I had to. I had to improvise. Mm -hmm. So actually, I think a good a good uh, principle you can live by is with what George Carlin said. Basically, is uh, I don't trust anything the government tells me. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you, you really shouldn't. If you take if you take that as a first principle, that everything that a politician says is a lie. It's been usually everything they see on mainstream television is a lie. That's a pretty good principle to start off. With. <laughs> you know, yeah. Even if you well, have no know. even if you have no prior knowledge, but. Um, all right. Very good. Thank you very much for the conversation. Um, you so, too. Yeah. So um, this is Peaceful Anarchism, uh, the Voluntary Virtues Network, and the Conscious Resistance Network. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. All right. Bye. Take care.